You're listening to Meatheads with Mark Lalone and Derek DeLille. We're talking all things lifting, fitness, training, exercise, nutrition, post-workout recovery, weight loss, and weight gain. All in a fun setting, informal, just a couple of trainers talking about fitness, life, workouts, parenting, and dad jokes. In this episode, we'll be discussing our favorite fitness myths debunk, our own workout routines, what we like to eat post-workout, and what you should also be eating post-workout. Eagle's Nest Convenience and LeFleur's Restaurant, located on Route 207. Eagle's Nest, open daily from 8 to 11. Pick up something fresh from their deli counter. Open 8 to 6 on weekdays and 10 to 5 on Saturdays. And while you're out, grab some takeout or call in for delivery at LeFleur's Restaurant, open 11 to 7 from Sunday to Wednesday and 11 to 8 from Thursday to Saturday. All your needs in one convenient location. Really looking forward to this conversation. So Derek DeLille, you're the founder of Total Fitness. You are a personal trainer. You've been a certified personal trainer for many years. Uh, my name is Mark Lalonde. I have also been a personal trainer for many years, and we are going to spend the rest of this podcast and other podcasts going forward discussing all kinds of fun stuff in fitness, fitness trends, things we want to make fun of in fitness, uh, things we like, fitness news, lifting weights, theories, nutrition, anything that revolves around movement, your body, and how we move it. I used to run a podcast called Movement is Medicine that explored nutrition and fitness with uh, different people, but uh, we decided going forward, Derek and I were going to make a go of this, so we're looking forward to getting started, and we welcome the rest of you along for the ride. Derek, great to have you. Thank you for having me again. So we're going to jump right into it. It is fall. People are sort of getting into what we call quote-unquote cuffing season. You are a trainer. You have had people come to you and say, I want to get in shape. I want to look like a certain thing. Where do you start them off? Well, I usually ask them how long they've been training for, how long they've been around. Are they accustomed to exercising with weights? Is it body weight stuff? Um, a lot of my clients usually come to me brand new, which is great because they don't have any outside influences. So I can kind of teach them what I know and we take it from there. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've had some discussions behind the scenes and things like that. So we'll get right into theory right off the bat. When I'm, when I'm training a new client, I like to immediately start them with a cross train, hit every muscle group on a daily basis. That's usually for clients who are two to three times a week training people. I'm a seven day a week training person. I assume you're probably pretty close to that. If not six, seven periodized training is fantastic. Your week starts. What do you start with? For myself or for my clients? For you personally, for Derek DeLille. Well, right now I'm, I'm, I'm training only three days a week. I'm following different type of programs. I like to do a little bit of uh, low reps, high volume. For instance, uh, 10 sets of three using uh, approximately 80% of my max on the main exercise. And I'll do my 10 sets of three. Next week, I'll go up to 85%. The week after, 87%. And then finally finishing off at 90% and taking a week off and starting the whole program all over again with the new estimated one rep max. Perfect. Um, that's what I've been doing for the last maybe two months. And then after I do that, you know, I like to kind of change up every now and then, uh, maybe tone it down a bit, do a little bit more lighter exercises, maybe more a cardio style workout. If I, if I say like a, like a cross training type workout for, for the next couple of weeks, kind of a, I don't want to call it a, a deload, but a totally different stimulus. Sure. Um, I mean, obviously deload weeks have their place. Uh, it's easier on the joints. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not getting any younger. So deload weeks take place a little bit more frequently than they used to. Yeah. Usually at the week five mark, maybe week four, depending on how I'm progressing. Yeah. I, I, I'm noticing the same thing and I'm in my forties. So I don't imagine it's going to get any easier as my life goes on. So I've actually discovered literally this week, Derek, I found the way I used to train can't really apply the, to the way I train today. I, you know, when I started training at 34, 35 years old, I had the energy to do, you know, X amount of, of sets in a day. And I'd have, you know, 15 to 20 seconds rest between sets. And I'm noticing now that I need 20 to 45 seconds rest between sets. And my weights are pretty much static. So it's not like they've gone up in 10 years. And I'm like, why am I so exhausted? You know, that, that's actually a good point. Uh, I just recently read an article. It was, uh, was kind of interesting and it was kind of aimed at me, which I didn't really like too much. It's like if you're <laughs> training and you're over 40 years old, read this. And usually I never read it because I always think I'm Superman invincible. I can still train like I'm 20. And the article pretty much starts off. If most people start working out when you're 20 years old. So if you're 40 or 45, in my case, reading this, you've been training for 25 years. 
And he went on to say, you're, you're, you're grinding yourself in the gym, lifting heavier weights, trying to get on maybe a five, six day program, eating your protein, eating tons of calories to gain maybe two, three pounds of muscle a year at our age. And they're like, why don't you just try to train lighter and lose 10 pounds? What are you going to look like? You know, wh- where are you going to look like better? Five mm-hmm. pounds of maybe extra muscle with a little bit of fat or 10 pounds lighter and leaner. Right. And they said, you know what? Why am I busting my butt? I'm 45 mm-hmm. years old. I'm not going to squat 600 pounds. Nope. Not even 500 anymore. Nope. Because you hear that that left knee? I do. Good. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> that, I, 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 I feel you. I actually couldn't even warm up on an elliptical yesterday because my left knee was like, nope, not going to let you do it. So those weird aches and pains that come in your 40s are just, they are yeah, a I, killer. And I never thought I'd actually reach that point where you feel the shoulder. So now you got those, uh, this, uh, this elastic slingshot yep. product it's called so you don't hurt your shoulders doing yep. bench press dynamic resistance baby yep. it's the best ne- neoprene um elbow wraps and ah, knee wraps the greatest things on the planet yep yep so yeah i look like i'm, I'm going to war yep. after everywhere during every workout so i put my special boots on put my knee pads on my elbow pads my belt and maybe my slingshot for my chest pressing and for what reasons you can lift heavier you know drag this sport on for another what, a couple of years so you mm-hmm. can gain maybe one or two pounds, which right. chances are probably won't happen. So this next phase of my training is going to be downshifted a little bit. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to be lifting 80% of my max. I'll probably go with 50 or 60, but get the reps in there, get the volume in there. Dare I say, add some burpees to the program, burn some calories. Oh, God, you know. burpees. You know. Yeah. No, they're good. They're solid. I, I like to start all of my workouts with a cardio blast, two minutes on Jacob's ladder or a two minute sprint in place, um, and then right into a plank. So you're breathing hard, your abdominal wall has to stay high, and it, it, it's, it's a double up on the, on the cardiovascular and on the lung capacity. So that usually sets my heart rate, and then I'm able to just begin my lifting right from there. Yeah, it's a, it's a great warm up to, to get in and, and do something like that. The old warm up is sitting on the bike reading the, 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 the magazine isn't, isn't what you need for for a warm up anymore. No, Your warm up should get you sweating almost like a like a mini workout. I absolutely. I I'm of the I'm of the full belief that your warm up should take you at least to your max to your 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 estimated max heart rate at some point, maybe, you know, a couple seconds, but you should get up there at the very least so you can continue to work at that rate. Cuz what I've noticed at this age is for instance, one of my workouts I had to do 10 sets of 3 yeah. part of my program. And one of my clients was training alongside with me and the first 2 to 3 rep or sets it's kind of tough. I'm like, you know what? By the time I get to my fifth, sixth set, I'm going to be warmed up. Mm-hmm. And it does happen. So it mm-hmm. takes, for me, five, six sets before I warmed up. And the next three, three or four sets are like where I'm strong. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so what I learned from doing that is I need a better warm up before I start that training. A hundred percent. And I wish more people knew it because sometimes we just want to rush into it without adequate stretching, adequate dynamic warm ups, adequate or, in, or inadequate, I should say, warming up. Right. So let's, let's stay on that topic for a second. You just discussed your 10 by three set structure. And I wanted to get into that a little bit because I, I often start my clients with the opposite. I often do three sets of an exercise with 10 repetitions, just, you know, pretty basic starting point for a lot of this stuff. It basically lets their muscles get engaged. They're not actually gaining strength per se, but they're, you know, activating their muscles and letting them get into, uh, get into the activity. I have since upped all of my reps to 20. My rep range is now 20 on every exercise I do, except heavy bench. That's to failure. It's usually 12 to 15, but uh, it's it's come to 20 in the last little while, and I am utterly exhausted. So I'm wondering if you have any thoughts as to when, you know, maybe I might be able to recover. (laughs) After doing 20 reps, when to recover? Usually if you're going to be doing 20 reps per set, it's it's extreme... um, a hypertrophy program where you're working your, I believe it's called the sacroplasm growth. That's right. So I, I've known many people that start off with a set of 50, then a set of 40, mm-hmm. a set of 30, all the way down. Yeah. And it takes this professional bodybuilder who trains his style, mind you, he's, he's, he, he's 45, 50 years old. Okay. He's, he's up there. Uh, he does that once a week. So he'll do really? a chest and back on a Monday. Yeah. And he'll do the, the 50 reps, 40, all the way down to 20. Mm-hmm. And he would take the whole week off before he hits chest and back again on Monday. Really? So the whole week off? Yeah. He splits his body apart three days. Mm-hmm. Um, and he feels that's how long it takes him to recover. Because mm-hmm. when you look at the reps, you, you add your 50, you add your 40, you add them all together. That's mm-hmm. a lot of reps. That's a lot of reps. And even though you're not using maximum poundages, you're probably using lighter weight, but it's a different stimulus. Uh, it's 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 asinine how the, the, um, the muscles just, the, the, the lactic acid sets in. Why 
17, 18 reps sometimes. And, and I mean, I, you know, I can power through to 20, but I mean, the idea of doing 50, no, thank you. No, I, I, I've actually tried it on a, on a row machine before on a one arm dumbbell row. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get to your 20, 25 reps, for me, it was my bicep tendon was burning. All the, all the bicep area was burning. My forearms were burning. Not much in the back during that session. Right, because it's the undertrained. It's the, 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 the lesser trained muscles that tend to give out. Exactly. And, right. that, and that's where muscle, um, mind and muscle connection come into play. So if you kind of focus on those lats working on your rhomboids, then you, 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 you will feel the next day. But during that moment, it's your biceps. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I actually did back biceps about an hour and a half mm -hmm. ago. And I had the exact same experience. Started with a straight up back exercise, straight arm pull downs and a straight up bicep exercise. Then we went to the compound stuff, uh, the rows, seated row, lat pull down, supinated row and bent over row. And uh, 20 of each. And when I was done, like I, there was a literal puddle in front of my, of my station. And I, uh, I had it in me to get a few more sets in, but at a certain point like that, that was enough. 20s. No, when, you, when you're doing these 20 reps, is it one round or are you doing multiple sets? No, what I'm doing is I'll, uh, I'll do mini circuits. So I'll go lat pull down, you know, I, the rest time it takes to get up from lat pull down and go over to my next station, uh, you know, say single arm row today with a, with a heavy dumbbell. So I'll set up single arm row, heavy dumbbell, bang that out. And then over to say supinated row, do 20 of those. And then back to lat pull down. So I'm getting a rest, but I'm not getting a rest. Right, Does right. that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So that that's uh, that's been the toughest part of it is targeted body part training with little to no rest at high rep load is uh, is it's it's a lot harder than you think because it's easy. I don't want to say it's easy, but it's easier to load up a barbell, crank out three reps like on my previous mm -hmm. uh, uh, workout, and I rest the whole minute. Right. And you know, I'm sitting there looking at my watch because it's not very, it's your 80% of your max isn't your super max. You should be able to do that for like six, seven times. So yep. you do your three rest, your three. Mm -hmm. It kind of got boring in the beginning, but as the weights increase, then yep. it, was, it was getting serious business, especially on the squats. I'm like 10 sets of squats is ridiculous. 10 sets of squats is ridiculous. And then we're talking free, no Smith machine. No Smith machine at my place. I just have free weights and barbells. Right. Awesome. And the magic with that is... In my, in my opinion, I could be completely wrong, but when you're mm -hmm. doing your tenses of three, you're getting your 30 reps with 80% mm -hmm. of your max. That's right. And if you do three sets of 10, you're still getting 30% of your max or 30, uh, 30 reps, but yeah. using, say, 50% of your max. So in theory, because I always try to look for a theory of a workout, mm -hmm. which one is better? Mm -hmm. And I don't think there is a better one. I think right. whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. I'm not a high rep guy. Right. I can do like 12 reps and my, I start burning everywhere. Right. So in my personal experience, I'd, I'd rather do... 30 reps total but breaking down into three reps mm -hmm. each time mm -hmm. yeah i've uh, i've tried both and i like both and i think they both have their place frankly i i'm in uh fat burning season so high rep is is where it's at yep. for me at this point which um so that will actually take us to our very next topic when we're talking about fat burning we're talking about nutrition more often than not because it has to do 80 percent with what you're eating when, yep. when when you're talking about uh, a weight loss through training and and exercise. Tell me about your favorite post-workout meal. What's what's your number one go-to? Usually it's just plain old chocolate milk. Mm -hmm. And I usually add a scoop of protein to it just mm -hmm. to get a little bit more protein than the mm -hmm. 12 that's in there. However, somebody, uh, one of my clients recommended this to me. And he, he saw it after a, a champion CrossFit athlete. He would have a Snickers bar. And I'm like, a Snickers bar? That's ridiculous. That's a chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea is to get glucose into your system as soon as you're done your workout. Right. So I'm looking at it. I'm like 30 grams of sugar, mm -hmm. chocolate milk, 30, 30 grams, grams of, sugar. of sugar. And they got the same amount of calories, except obviously Snickers has a little bit more fat due to the, the peanuts. The peanuts, yeah. So I decided to switch over and, and, and grab myself a Musketeers. Which oh, nice. Is pure sugar. Pure sugar. No fat. No peanuts. No nothing. And, it, <laughs> and I felt ridiculous eating after my, after my workout with a protein right. shake, of course. Of course. And I don't think your body will really realize the difference between a, a, a musketeer bar or a chocolate milk. It's right. going to break it down into sugars and yep. absorb as, as your as body sugars needs. And, and generally replenish. Yeah. So that's kind of my fun meal of yep. the day. Okay. Yeah. I am 1000% addicted to one single meal and that is uh, chicken cut up, sliced and uh, dropped on a bed of three or four cups of baby spinach in a salad bowl. And then I spritz sriracha over the top of all of that. And my God, Derek, it is to <laughs> die for. It is the greatest meal on the planet. 
Sounds a lot more healthier than mine. <laughs> I, I, I really, I, I can eat one of those and have energy from, you know, from the end of my workout till the end of the day sometimes. So it, it really does release over a longer period of time. But on the other hand, you know, I, uh, I sometimes I overdo it on the chicken. <laughs> There's that. I really do love chicken. I mean, it's it, probably my favorite food in the world. You know, we've discussed what you eat after. And is that, is that your favorite thing to eat? Well, it's not my what's your favorite? favorite. My favorite, you know what? It's kind of tough because I don't have an appetite. It's not like I can be, I kind of eat for necessity. Right. And right now I'm weighing about 240 pounds, pretty mm -hmm. lean. Mm -hmm. And I need to eat a lot of food. Right. So that chicken, right. I, I get my meals prepared. Mm -hmm. So I have um, a couple of meals that are chicken with a sriracha sauce on mm -hmm. it. It's, it's got some, some, uh, some green, some broccoli, some rice. Fabulous. Another meal has like, uh, like, um, what was it? It was penne with, um, Veridero, Veridero, I think it's called. It's some kind of beef dish. Okay. Yeah. It, it, they're all good. They take me forever to eat. Right. And they're only maybe 500 calories. But like I said, I don't have much of an appetite. So I'm sitting there and I'm chowing. It's not even fun. It's almost like work. So to say I have a favorite meal, I can't really say. I, I Unfortunately, I don't have a favorite meal. It's more like I got to eat again. I right. Gotta, and because right. I do intermittent fasting, I only really eat three meals a day. Right. But those meals need to be, be equivalent sustenance. to exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think eight, nine hundred calories per meal. They, they have to be, and most of it. This is going to go uh, probably uh, on the other end of fat burning. But mm -hmm. for for myself, I do need uh, a lot of carbs. Right. I, I try to get at least two to three, maybe hundred carbs per day. Right. And sometimes even that's hard to get down mm -hmm. unless I'm drinking sodas and and right. Gatorades. Yeah, Gatorades are uh, chock yeah, full yeah, of that. You know what? Yeah. So I try to eat it, eat healthy, but sometimes to get those calories in, mm -hmm. that post-workout chocolate bar and sometimes the chocolate milk helps. Right. Oh, no doubt. No yeah. doubt. And then I stopped eating at eight o'clock. So from 12 to eight, that's when I'm trying to load up all your calories. Exactly. Got it. That's, that's generally where I like to put my stuff into. And, and on occasion, I mean, it's football season, so I coach my son's football team. So that's pretty exhausting so that I tend to be all out of energy when I come in from that. And I'm like, I need to eat again before bed. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'll do that, which is, you know, occasionally suboptimal because I have opted for when I'm that tired and that grumpy, I'll be like, Oh, I'll grab whatever's there. And it's not always a chicken and spinach, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm not going to lie to you. My favorite thing to eat post-workout is, and I just got, I just had one. So I wanted that this was fresh in my mind is I just stopped at a mirror or I stopped at a Lebanese food restaurant on the way back here from my workout. And I got myself a shishtou sandwich mm -hmm. with extra chicken, lettuce, tomatoes, and tons of hot sauce. That is good stuff. Yeah. That, you know, that's actually my, when there's, when you don't know what to make for, for one of your meals or for supper or you're on the road, Amir's is the place. And like for me, I get, for the calories, I need to get the, the full meal, which mm -hmm. I know has about a thousand calories. So that's usually my right. on the road go-to meal, sure. if anything. Well, the best thing about Amir, or I mean, or Lebanese places, because I don't want to just say Amir. Amir is probably the biggest chain, but there's a lot of great ones. I, I, my life changed when I realized that that was a fairly healthy takeout option. I love eating takeout, mm -hmm. and so when I realized that was an option that I could do, that would satisfy my hunger and, you know, provide adequate fuel without giving me too much. I was over the moon, and so since then, I would say Lebanese food is probably my favorite thing to eat. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Like everything looks healthy, it looks fresh. Like I'm not, I'm not into like the the fast food joints. You'll never see me at a McDonald's unless mm -hmm. for coffee because it got the greatest coffee. But uh, <laughs> other than that, Amir's, it's you're right. If if I had to choose a favorite food, an order out food, that would be it. There you go. Like uh, Lebanese food with the garlic sauce and everything. Awesome. Maybe if I'm dieting and I'm really trying to cut up, mm -hmm. maybe I'll, I'll play out a little bit different. Maybe I'll. I'll, maybe I'll still get it, but maybe eat half of it, let's say, or, yep. or leave it, leave out the potatoes or the rice. But yeah, you, you can you, you can mix around with that. Sure. Yeah. If you're shredding down, uh, you know, the potatoes, rice, the garlic sauce, that can all go. But at the base of it, you got fresh vegetables, you know, uh, hot chicken that's been roasting. So protein and complex carbs together. Hey, yeah. yeah there's no better source of energy to my mind. You just got to be smart about it. You do have to be smart about it. That brings me to our next segment. I'm a father. You also have kids. We're dads. So that means we have to, by law, appreciate dad jokes and dad humor. <laughs> and so we're going to throw out the dad joke of the week this week. And it's a, it's a fitness joke. So Derek, do you know 
which of your body parts is the most reliable? No. You can always, always count on your fingers. <laughs> I love that joke. And the best part about that joke is that my boss, uh, our, our editor-in-chief, is going to hate it. So <laughs> that's, that makes me even happier. That makes me so much happier. So because we are, uh, we're a news publication and we are tasked a little bit with uh, handling current events, we're going to just switch gears now and we'll uh, have a quick discussion about uh, a couple of different things that have popped up. There's a gym in Manitoba, Morfit Gym, just got themselves shut down for health violations. They're COVID-related health violations. People not wearing their masks, people not wiping up after themselves. Have you noticed a difference in people from the beginning, from when gyms reopened in April or May to October? Oh, for sure. I mean, like I run a, a private facility, so everybody that goes in there, it's not a, a, a large group. So right. we, we always see what people are doing. And after everything, they're always cleaning up, you know, to the point where they leave like uh, the uh, the solution spray on yeah, the floor. Yeah, the disinfectant the, spritz. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's everywhere. And, yeah. Like I'm really happy that a lot of people take it really serious, mm -hmm. especially in a small community that we're at now. Mm -hmm. And even though only people from the community come to my gym, right. it's nice that they, that they do... I don't want to say clean up after themselves because it just sounds like a dirty thing. But nowadays, this is what our life has come to. So they do clean up after themselves. They they got their uh, their wipes and they're wiping down the bars and the machines. And, you know, it, it's at the point where we just kind of make jokes about it now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, you know, just yep. fun stuff like that mm -hmm. to make it fun. Yeah. Because at the bottom of it all, it's it's not really fun when you think about it. Like, it's nice to be hygienic and clean up your... Absolutely. But now we're disinfecting every barbell, every plate. Right. And even when they leave, I got to spray everything down anyways. So mm -hmm. just... I guess we should have always kind of done something like that, but right. I think people are a little bit more at my place. They're, 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 they're really serious at what they do. Right. I, uh, I actually see clients in a number of different facilities. So I've had the opportunity to um, see a lot of the different places in action. And, and my general observation has been young people and, and older people tend to be the most diligent about cleaning up after themselves. It tends to be the people in their twenties, thirties and forties that tend not to do it as well. So every so often I want to look over and say, Hey, you're going to pick that up and go put it away after you're done. But very awesome. Sometimes that's, all that's you need is a look many, many years ago, uh, I was training at this gym and I'll say his name cause he's, he's kind of a famous trainer. His name's uh, Winston Roberts. He once judged the Arnold, uh, sure. The Arnold yes, School, yes, remember? yes, yes, and of course. He was my English teacher, but he was also the same, same time a trainer at this local gym. And I was 17 years old. I did an exercise, left the bar on the floor. And I started walking away and he gave me the look. And this guy's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's about maybe six, four, two forty. Not like a big, mean looking guy. He's just a big dude. A big dude. And he just gave me the look. And I looked at him and I tried not to look and he kept on, he, like his, his glance was just staring at me. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's all it took. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I'll put it back. And then that was it. It was fine. So yeah, sometimes just a look is all you got to give somebody and they feel like that guilt. Agreed. Agreed. I feel like that one, that level of guilt, that little tiny level of guilt should mm -hmm. be just enough to get them to put their stuff away after. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a shared yeah. space and uh, you know, when you're working out, you have to share the space mm -hmm. much as you may not like to, yeah. unfortunately, cause I have had times where I walk into the gym and go, Oh my God, there's too many people in here. This is going to be a nightmare. But you know, very often what I found is that I, I train, one of the places I train is at monster gym in Dollar Days Ormo. All right. And that's uh, it's a, it's a big facility. A lot of people go there. But what I've discovered is it's also a fairly hardcore lifting gym mm -hmm. and people are fairly diligent about making space for others. So I've discovered that the larger the critical mass of serious lifters at a gym, the more etiquette seems to be taken seriously. Really? Yeah. 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 If, you to, uh, if you go to the discount chains, I've been to some of the discount chains and, I, and I've seen people there and I've consulted with some of those chains. You see a little bit less diligence, a little bit less spritzing down. You know, you don't see quite as, you don't see the... Uh, the white film from the disinfectant on as many places. <laughs> so that's always nice to know that I'm like, Oh, somebody has been here and cleaned up after themselves. It's, it's always, always nice. So we're going to, uh, we're going to switch gears one more time and we're going to have a fun discussion about abdominal fat. We're going to on a, on a weekly basis or on a regular basis, excuse me, Derek and I are going to take time to debunk some sort of fitness myth or piece of nonsense that is making its rounds around social media or the internet or amongst people who just like to talk about that latest trend. So you brought this to my attention. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm we're going to talk about the abdominal lady on TikTok. 
And I think everybody is going to know who she is just by saying that. Just by saying yeah. the abdominal lady on TikTok, the lady doing the gyrating, twisting, folding your body in weird angles, abdominal exercise. And it's just the music and the yelling. It's just so catchy. I just watch it for the sake of that. Right. It, it is catchy. And, but what is a little bit misleading and dangerous and, and a question we get a lot in our business, I assume probably the question we get the most, mm -hmm. will abdominal crunches make my tummy flatter you know the million dollar answer is obviously a no no it's a hard no yeah you can do all the crunches in the world but if you're not changing the way you're eating i'm sorry that belly ain't getting any trimmer and nobody wants to hear that they want to see the next gadget they want to see what million dollar you know item that they need to purchase to get you know abs of steel yeah and and i always try to when I, when I think about ab equipment, because sometimes you see these things, hey, wait a minute, like the gut buster from the 80s, like, hey, wait a minute. The Suzanne Summer ab roller. Yes. <laughs> so then I started thinking back in the day before all these gadgets were invented and, you know, I use bodybuilding as a term, but back in the 70s and 60s, mm -hmm. I don't think they had all these gadgets, but most of them had nice physiques, mm -hmm. athletic physiques. And I don't think any of these uh, gyrating, twisting exercises were, were, were used. No, nope. back in the old days, they just lived heavy weights, walked around with heavy stuff, and as a byproduct, their abs got sharpened. But it's not just those exercises; it's cutting out your junk food and and losing fat. We all have abs, flex, feel it. We all feel it, but we all feel that extra layer of, of fat on top of it. That's it, because it's there, and and belly fat can be moved, but it, it it can't be it can't be modified, and it can't be removed, and it can't be flattened with crunches. You can do ten million crunches. And if you don't change the way you're eating, your ebbs will look exactly yeah. the same. So, um, you know, this is uh, one of those myths that we have to ask that I, I have to answer to pretty much every client. Like mo most, most clients say, well, you know, I don't really want to change the way I'm eating. I'm like, well, then I guess you don't want to lose weight and change your body because it's 80% of what goes in your mouth. Yeah. Maybe more. And you know what? Sometimes I'll, I'll have my female clients, they're, they're always like, okay, is this all the workout? I'm like, yeah, we're all done. Oh, well, we have time for abs. Can you give me some abs? So I'll go on Google. I'll look for this 300 rep ab workout. And it's mm -hmm. actually about 15 exercises, all totaling about 300 reps. Mm -hmm. It'll burn. Will it do anything? Yeah, it's fun to do. It's like, yeah, you feel great when you're done. Sure. But I always try to look at things. Are they, is it, pro, is it progressive? Is it something that you need to do to get the results you want? Because my time is always very short for myself. So I just try to use or, or do things that I know that's going to work. You know, not maybe I'm just going to spend the next 40 minutes on extra ab work because I feel it might work. I don't have time for that. I need to know what's going to work. Right. And sometimes I'll look at these big powerlifting strong men and, and you see their abs. And most of them have big, thick set of abs. And mm -hmm. that's from just pretty much carrying a lot of mm -hmm. heavy things in her yeah, hand. Deadlifts, power cleans, All that overhead presses. I, you're going to get, I mean, abdominals are a supporting muscle. They're involved in every, in every movement you do. If you do a deadlift, your abs are involved. You do a squat, your abs are involved. Uh, you do a front squat, your abs are more involved. And it doesn't mean that the girls have to lift 500 pounds no. or lift loads. Like I have some girls just pick up a, a maybe 50 pound kettlebells in each hand, which is heavy, but it, it's doable. And just walk around my gym. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, Derek, what's this doing? Trust me, you're going to feel it. It's, and it's everything. Day, yeah, farmer's and walk, day, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My, one of my favorite exercises, even to, like, to, to burn body fat, do like mm -hmm. three minutes on, one minute off. Sure. Just walk around with weights in your hand. Yeah. It's boring. It, it's a little. I, had one, I have one client who I see at an outdoor park, at an outdoor fitness gym, and there happens to be a bunch of different size tires. So I've given her the tire to carry and hold at her chest because she has back issues. So holding the tire up in front of her chest and walking around strengthens her abdominals yep. and her lower back. So, And you know what? When, when I do give this to clients, they'll look at me and when they ask me that question, I'll go home, I'll find out the research that I found it and I'll share the link with them to read. Mm -hmm. And the and some read it, some like, nah, I don't want to read it. Right. But And they say that to me, Derek, I don't read your stuff. I'm like, well, read it. You understand why we're farmer walking with like a weight in your hand. It looks ridiculous. Maybe like you're just putting my, my, my weights back, you know, like, hey, yep. there's weights all over the floor. What, why? Because mm -hmm. your job is pick each one up and put it back. That's mm -hmm. your that's your warm up, let's say. Yeah, and it engages your core. And if they read it, like, oh, so if I just walk around with weights, I can I can get leaner and the cardio aspect and the abs. I'm like, yeah, it all comes into play. Farmers walk is. I mean, there's a reason it's in the world's strongest man competition. Yeah, yeah, you know, because it's a legit test of of your strength. Yeah, and again, these aren't going to bulk up women. That's a, that's another thing. Women are like, well, I don't want to 
get bulky, you know? So yeah. it's like, don't worry about that. Lift heavy in, in, oh, in terms of what you can lift heavy. That is a fabulous myth for us to debunk. Yeah. Next time. Yeah. Yeah. We, I think that's the one we're going to, we're going to get into next time. It's a very popular one. Mm -hmm. Very popular. It's the one I hear second most after mm -hmm. Will Crunches flatten my tummy. <laughs> but uh, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Mark Lalonde. It's uh, Derek DeLille from Derek, Total Fitness. Sorry, Derek DeLille is the founder of Total Fitness. And let's just, let's just be very clear about that. Derek doesn't, is not just a trainer. Derek is the owner and the operator of a, of a high class, high achievement fitness facility right here in Gunawage. And it would behoove each and every one of you get a look at that facility in the uh, coming weeks. I understand there might be some classes on the way. Yeah, yeah. Since uh, the COVID re restrictions are kind of getting a little bit loosened up, I'm starting to get back into the gym, having those one-on-one -on -one clients. Not much open classes, but we're doing a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, some group training and getting back to the old ways of running uh, Total Fitness. Very cool. Thanks for listening this week. Anna. Thanks for listening to Meatheads. Stay up to date with all your D was a podcasts on Apple, Spotify, or Google. This project has been made possible by the Community Media Strategic Support Fund and offered jointly by the Official Language Minority Community Media Consortium and the Government of Canada. The views and opinions of the guests expressed in this podcast do not reflect those of Redewise and its employees.